Welcome to the Algebra Cafe again. No apples this time. In the last click pick, we introduced the concept of solving for x, but we kept things pretty simple. They'll still be pretty simple in this click pick too, but we want to branch out a little and figure out what to do when we have division aspects or adding, subtracting aspects. You'll see what I mean by the end of this one. Without any further ado, let's get right into it. 2x plus 6 equals 10. Now, what might this be referring to? It might mean that if we add 6 pounds to the weight of 2 apples, it equals 10 pounds. But at this point, let's forget about the real world. Let's go into the world of, of beyond and just play it by the rules. Let's pretend that you've understood nothing. You've, let's say you've understood nothing I've said. Let's, for, let's pretend like it doesn't make sense. I'm convinced that half the problem of people with algebra is they're trying to know why in the world am I doing what I'm doing. There's a point at which you just forget it. It doesn't matter. Don't try to understand it. Just do what I tell you to do. And here's what you're supposed to do to solve something like this. Remember what the main point of this is. There is really one main point to this entire click pick and it is that you can do anything to either sides of that equal sign. You can do anything you want as long as you do the same thing to both sides. You can do anything you want as long as you do the same thing to both sides. So let's say some evil math teacher tells me that I need to solve for x. Okay, I can defeat the evil math teacher. The first thing I want to do if I'm going to solve for x is I want to get the x all alone. I want to get all the other people out of the room and I want to just talk to the x. So I notice that I've got a 6 hanging around the x. Get away, ye 6. Get out of here. How do I get rid of that 6? Well, I know that 6 minus 6 is 0. So, if I take away 6, if I take away 6 from this side, I'll kind of have, I'll, I'll have moved a little closer to having the x by itself. Well, can I do that? I can, just as long as I take away 6 from both sides. I can do anything as long as I do it to both sides. So I can get rid of that 6 by taking away 6 just as long as I also take away 6 on the other side. So 6 minus 6 is 0, which is nothing. So on this side I'm left with the 2x. And then 10 minus 6, you might remember, is 4. So if I do a little voodoo, abracadabra, poof, this is what I've done. If I take away 6 from both sides, I have rearranged the numbers, I've rearranged the teeter-totter to where I now have a new equation that is, it's really just a different form of what I had there before, 2x equals 4. Now, I've come a lot closer to getting that x all by itself, to getting everybody out of the room and just getting 1x, solving for 1x. How am I going to now get that 2? I've got to get rid of that 2. What does 2x mean? Well, hopefully by the time you watch this click pick, you already know that 2x is a shorthand way of saying 2 times x. Well, I don't want to know what 2 times x is. I want to know what 1 times x is. In other words, I want to know what x all by itself is. How can I get rid of that 2? Well, just like with the apples, if I take a 2 and I get half of it, I've got 1. Half of 2 is 1. So if I divide by 2, let me do it with a red pen. If I divide that by 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1. And 2 divided by 2 is 1, one will give me 1 times x, which is just an x. And so if I divide this by 2, I'm going to get rid of that number in front of the x, and I'll have my answer. I'll have an x equals something. Well, can I do this? Can I divide by 2? You can do anything as long as you do it to both sides. So 
So as long as I divide the other side by 2, I'm allowed to do this. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, and I'm left with 1x, and 1 times x, we, our math teachers write 1 times x, just x. And 4 divided by 2, you may know, is 2, so I say abracadabra again, and this is what I'm left with, x equals 2. I've gotten the x all by itself, I've gotten everybody out of, else out of the room, I've got his identical twin out of the room, and I'm left with just x equals 2. I have solved for x. That is how you solve for x. I could end right here, except that I want to do just a few more examples before I leave you alone, so that you can get into the mood of solving for x. So let's close with two more examples. 5x minus 6 equals 19. Remember, we want to get everybody else out of the room. So we've got these, these minus 6 people that we want to get rid of. Well, how do we get rid of minus 6? Well, I know that minus 6 plus 6 is 0. And if that doesn't make sense to you, if I add 6, it's like doing 6 minus 6. These cancel each other out. And I can do that. as long as I do it to both sides. So plus 6 and minus 6, it's like matter and antimatter. Boom! They end up being 0. They cancel each other out. 19 plus 6 is 25. And so now all I have to do is go abracadabra, and I have 5x equals 25. OK, I've gotten the other people kind of out of the room, but now I have 5x. I don't want to know what 5x is. My teacher asked me to solve for x all by itself. I've got to get rid of the 5. How do I get rid of the 5? Well, if I divide by 5, I know that 5 divided by 5 is 1, and I'm left with 1x, and 1x is the same as just x. I can do that as long as I do it to both sides. So. 5x divided by 5 is going to give me x. 25 divided by 5 will give me x equals 5. So now I have solved for x. Let's do one more example. OK, this one looks a little funny because now I've got x over 3. And of course, it can get real complicated with fractions and all those other things that you already know how to do. But this is just trying to get you in the door. First thing I want to do is I want to get the x all by itself. And I've got to get those 9 to get out of the room. So how do I get rid of a minus 9? Well, if I put a plus 9 here, then the 9s will cancel each other out. Plus, mine, plus 9 minus 9, poof, they're gone. And I can do that as long as I do it to both sides. So as long as I add 9 to both sides, I'm OK. What's 3 plus 9? It's 12. OK, so now let me go ahead and take what I've done here and say abracadabra, and I've got x over 3 equals 12. Now. I, need, I don't want to know what x over 3 is. The teacher asked me to solve for x. How do I get rid of that 3? Well, if I have 1 third, how do I get from 1 third to 1? If I have a third of a pi, how do I get to 1 pi? Well, I need 3 1 thirds of the pi to get 1 pi. If none of that made any sense, forget it. Flush it. Basically, the way I get rid of a 3 in the bottom is I multiply by 3. Because 3 times 1 third is 3 over 3, which is 1. So if I multiply by 3, I'll get rid of the 3 in the bottom, and I'll be left with x. I can multiply by 3 on this side as long as I multiply by 3 on the other side as well. So I'm going to end up with x on the one side, and 12 times 3 is going to end up as 36 on the other side. So the so solving for x 
x equals 36. Now, if you got lost at any point throughout these last few minutes, let me summarize. When a teacher asks you to solve for x, what you're trying to do is to get rid of all the other numbers that are clouding the x. You're trying to get rid of all those numbers on the x side, wherever the x is. You're trying to get rid of them all. And the way you do that is, is you you add things and you multiply th or, and you multiply things, or maybe you subtract things, or maybe you divide things, but basically you do whatever you have to do to get rid of all the other numbers that are there in the room with the x. You want to be left with x equals something, or y equals something, or z equals something. That's what you want to be left with. And the rule is, you can do anything you want as long as you do it to both sides of the equation. You can multiply anything you want as long as you do it to both sides. You can divide anything you want. You can subtract anything you want. You can add anything you want as long as you do it to both sides. And the key is to get rid of something on one side, if you want to get rid of a plus, you minus the same thing and do it to both sides. If you want to get rid of a minus, you plus the same thing as long as you do it to both sides. If you want to get rid of a 3 times x, you divide by whatever that is as long as you do it to both sides. And if you have an x over something, then you multiply by whatever that something is to get rid of it. You do the opposite, cancel it out until you're left with x equals something. And that is the basics of how to solve for x. This concludes the second click pick on solving for x. I hope you found it pretty easy to understand and follow and will no longer believe those who tell you that algebra is just too hard to do. See you next time.